Hello, welcome to a new video. So it's a bit of a catch up one this week. Um, I realised I didn't properly wrap up a couple of the things I mentioned in last week's video. I'll, I'll just take you over and show you those boxes. So these are the two boxes that uh, you saw me cover last week. I've just painted the edges in a dark brown. It doesn't look very good close up. From, from a distance you get the sort of vintagey vibe. <laughs> So yeah, not too bad. I still haven't sorted out everything on these shelves. Um, there's still more work to do there, but it's it's getting there, it's getting there. Another thing I filmed last week was me sorting out my paintbrushes, <laughs> which was a very indulgent, fun task, but one that did need doing. It's funny, when um, my sister-in-law bought this for me, I thought, oh, well, I only need one slot for paintbrushes. What will I use the rest for? <laughs> and uh, yeah, now here, here we are. So I have sorted them into round watercolour brushes. These are faux squirrel brushes. These are sort of the, the ones that carry a lot of water brushes. Uh, so we've got this really soft wash brush. We've got a Chinese brush. Oh, and I've got one from Jackson's, a uh, another imitation squirrel one. So those are there. Then we've got watercolour filberts. Then we've got palette knives. Then we've got acrylic and oil flat brushes. Acrylic and oil round brushes. And that takes us back to the beginning. I've got a couple of other containers. These are ones that are a little bit cheaper, not so precious about these ones, some very old ones, things that come in sets from a long time ago. Chris bought me this set of very fine detail brushes, which sadly aren't proving like they hold up very well. They've already gone quite sort of spiky at the edges, so you can't get that precise thin line. But yeah, so I've put them over here for now, but they're still useful to have nearby some of them still look all right i've also got the this set which i haven't had enough experience of yet i haven't decided whether they'll belong with the nice brushes or the cheap brushes they feel they feel good actually they feel like they've got a nice sort of spring but still also soft so yeah hopefully i'll just move them over here and then up here i also have this very handy brush holder which I use when I'm doing oil or acrylics these are the brushes that are on the go so currently these ones need an extra wash in the Murphy's wood cleaner I picked this tip up from the Milan Art Institute concentrated wood cleaner cleans off your brushes old acrylic old oil paint all comes off it's weird it goes really gloopy and odd but it works I think yeah these that one that one definitely needs to be washed that's gone quite stiff and then these are the retraction tools retraction subtraction tools which might go somewhere else because i don't really need them out i don't use them very often and then i didn't show you really what went in the trolley so i nearly thought my ink sprays were all just going to fit on the top shelf but sadly they didn't quite um so i think i might have to pick a couple of colors and use them till they run out and so i can get them all up on the top shelf so yeah the only awkward thing as um heather pointed out <laughs> in the comments is that you can't see the colors very clearly but they are in rainbow order they go pink red orange yellow green blue and go violet so these are all the non-metallic ones and then below that are the few that didn't quite fit. So these are the white, grey and black. And behind them I put pastes. I put the coloured metallic pastes that, I, that I've got. And, oh, sorry Merlin. And also these uh, funny weird things, glitter kisses. I haven't used those very much actually. I need to sort of use them a bit, a bit more often. And then at the moment, the bottom shelf has just a couple of things that I reach for pretty often. So I've got my tin. This has got drawing supplies in. We've got a, some charcoal, some different kinds of pencil, water-soluble pencils, that sort of thing. I use that all the time, so I thought it'd be handy to have that here. Ink tents pencils I use all the time. And then I also put my, my core watercolour tin 
in there and also my metallic gouache I'm going to try not to overcrowd it so that I can so that those things remain quite accessible so there we are that's the contents of the Rascog trolley or cart and that's really helped ease things up on the storage just here thank you for your comments on that video I'm glad you found it funny a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek look at what makes a real artist <laughs> So I've had quite a busy week this week. Um, I've been sewing madly because it's a snowdrop themed dress, snowdrop flower fairy themed dress. This is a little bit of a, a sneak peek into a project that's I'm not really supposed to reveal until the end of the year but I really wanted to have it finished while the snowdrops are still out so that I could do some filming and photography with them together so I really needed to hurry up on that one. <laughs> So the next video will probably be, fingers crossed, weather permitting, a little trip out getting some photos. I think we're going to a place called Fine Court. I've been googling nearby uh, snowdrops. There are plenty of snowdrops but they're in sort of quite public parks usually or private gardens. So we found a National Trust place and hopefully it won't be too busy. Hopefully we can find a little spot where there's snowdrops that's a bit more private so we can do some pictures in a corner of this garden. <laughs> also been dealing with tradespeople coming in and out. We've had, <laughs> it's been a bit of a nightmare in a way. Well no, it's not been that bad but I've had the people coming in for the leak in the bathroom upstairs the shower room I should say. Luckily we had British Gas Home Care cover so they came out and have fixed the problem, they fixed the leak, changed the pipe but they don't put it back, they don't put everything back and they are just a nightmare to get hold of. They keep saying oh, I'll call you back, I get passed from one person to another person to another person, I'm on the phone for half an hour at a time not getting anywhere so I've still got to chase them up. I think they rely on the fact that people just give up and go and pay somebody but they will pay for a plasterer but they won't pay for the tiling in the shower because that comes under decoration even though we can't use the shower until it's tiled because then it's not waterproof. Anyway <laughs> that's an issue still happening. So yesterday I more or less finished clearing up and dusting the plaster bits that had fallen off the ceiling and onto the bookshelves. I'm sure we'll be finding little bits here and there for a long time to come. brand new bathroom that we got just before Christmas that also had a leak <laughs> and yeah it totally confused me uh, the guy the guy that fitted it came and uh, said I'm here to fix the leak and I just got totally confused which which leak which bathroom <laughs> but yeah I think he's fixed that as well so that's something we've just got to wait and see really can't tell at the moment everything is still wet behind the bottom of the Think, but we will we'll see hopefully that's now fixed also the gutters broke so um, we've had the chap out who put them up to fix that so it's a bit on the go with home things and I still obviously if you were around before Christmas need to finish painting the kitchen 
I can't believe I still haven't done that. So um, yeah, hopefully I'll have time to do that soon. But yeah, the sewing has really been taking priority at the moment. Although of course I'm always finding new things to uh, take up my time. <laughs> One being, well, I suppose I'm still I'm still doing that picture. I think I showed you the start of it last week. Let me see if I can reach it. Yes, I can. So that's coming along. I'm really liking the brush strokes of the clothing and I've sort of just some random bits here. Still want to work on the skin. It's a bit bright, a bit pinky bright skin tone and obviously I haven't finished the hair. So that's still a work in progress but I'm quite happy with how the brush strokes on the clothing has uh, has worked out. I think that looks quite good. That's sort, that's sort of the thing I wanted to do. I wanted to have these brush stroke brush strokes showing I think that's a more sort of modern way of painting people um, like to see the brush strokes rather than it all being blended in and I like it um, I'm not just doing it for fashion's sake I do I do like that sort of style I enjoyed that when I was doing the oil painting and it came about really easily and I don't know whether it was because of being back on paper or using thicker consistency of gouache paint. I'll tell you what, I'm really liking the Stay Wet palette. I don't like the way the the beads of paint bead up. I don't like using a tin for a palette for the same reason because all the paint just balls up and you can't really see it. You can't see the colours very well. So that's my only criticism of it that I don't like. Maybe if I try different surfaces, some people use tracing paper, some people use freezer paper or greaseproof paper perhaps so I'm gonna perhaps try different surfaces to see if there's one where the paint doesn't all ball up but anyway it did the trick and it's still doing the trick the paint is still nice and usable it's not drying up at all and therefore I'm able to get those brush strokes because it's nice and good nice juicy consistency Thank you for your replies to my first email. Uh, some of your ideas are really good for what you'd like to see in the in the private videos. Some of them I think I will have to do on YouTube because uh, somebody suggested that I do a day in the life or a morning routine type video. Those are going to take some editing. So more likely to find that on my YouTube channel here. But thank you very much. It's really interesting to know what you'd like to see. And I was actually quite surprised quite a few of you mentioned things that aren't crafty related and more like general lifestyle bloggery type content, which is what I used to do, you know. I've been trying to sort of hone it down and narrow it down to just creative content. And maybe you'd like to see more just general lifestyle. Someone said cooking. Um, more of the home stuff, um, that sort of thing. So yeah, do let me know in the comments whether you'd rather see just the arty crafty stuff, the sewing and the art and that sort of thing. I know I do also include bits of the garden but, and our days out in the camper van. Those are sort of for my own benefit really because I just want to have a record of them. I want to be able to look back at the days out and the holidays. But yeah, maybe you'd be interested in more general stuff I don't know let me know or whether you just think no just stick to the arts and sewing please Helen that's that's all I'm interested in <laughs> but yeah thank you and don't forget to subscribe to that newsletter I'll be sending out the next one in two days time from here so it'll be the 29th of February the next one will go out that will be um, a roundup of the month and this will be a public post. Substack is a tricky thing. I don't blame if you if you want to like 
stay away i don't know i don't want to get involved in another thing i haven't heard of or i don't understand it is a, a weird old place uh, and i'll try and explain it again i don't think i did it very well the first time so it's substack is a place where people can post their blogs but those blogs which could also be you know your traditional writing it could be video it could be podcast all of that gets emailed every time they post it gets emailed to subscribers by the way it's chucking it down with rain right now i hope the sound isn't too distracting if you can hear it so i was very hesitant to begin with because i thought oh people don't want more things clogging up their inbox but also when i had a blog my numbers my visitor numbers were so low because i i just didn't get found in google searches not for very many things and there was, there's just so much content out there it's even harder to be found whereas on substack you can use it as a place to go looking for blog posts to type in a subject you might be interested in artists for one thing you can look up other artists and find their blogs and discover new people so it is nice in that respect so i'm aiming to do two different types of posts so two, only two a month. I'm not going to be bombarding you with emails every day. One of which will be private. I won't publish that on the Substack website, um, like my first one. It's just going to be an email. And I just wanted that because I just wanted that connection with people who are happy to give me their email address, that want to um, perhaps get to know me a bit better. I'm more likely... I'm definitely more comfortable with being more open, a bit more honest maybe. I'll include videos that are unedited and just more raw. So that one will have some sort of content that will only be available to subscribers. By the way, this is completely free. And then the second email will be a public post. So if you, anybody could find that on Substack and that's hopefully a way I can more people will find me because um, if I want to start earning a living as an artist, <laughs> if I want to sell any paintings and also I'll be still talking about threads of a fairy tale, I need to increase my audience. So I'm hoping that other people will find me. No offence to you guys. <laughs> suddenly feel really awkward. <laughs> so that's my intention. I only intend to do two, but sometimes I won't have time. I, I'm not going to promise anything because sometimes I just know I won't have time and sometimes I might be on a splurge of writing and I want to share this I think, oh this is great I want to share this and and, I, and you might get a couple more extra but I, I promise I won't it won't be like on a daily basis I won't be annoying you oh dear Tesco's here <laughs> okay that's done <laughs> man I can't wait to go out and investigate the shopping but um I think actually that's everything I wanted to catch you up on this week. Oh no, 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 there is one more thing. <laughs> there is one more thing. If you follow me on Instagram, I've been doing a couple of challenges. Again, mad, don't really have the time for it. But uh, I just thought I'd let you know about them if you are on Instagram and want to have a look. I've, I've only just sort of started going back to Instagram. I've had quite a long hiatus particularly from the grid i have been doing stories in every now and then actually so this is all in stories where's my writing book oh well I'll, I'll just tell you about it quickly an author i really like beth kempton she's been running a challenge on her instagram called hashtag tiny winter poem so i've started a highlight on my little poems you've got 10 minutes and you're not allowed to edit that's the hard part <laughs> which I find difficult because it just means I'm sort of sitting there thinking for a bit longer which is a bit annoying I'd rather be writing it down I think I'd get more thoughts anyway sometimes I cheat So that's there if you're interested. I might actually include all of those in one of my newsletters. 
maybe the upcoming one it'll probably be finished by then and the other thing is i've been doing some small swatches do you remember do you remember i started some just after christmas on small a5 sheets and i was just doing some blodges and then like a, a very abstract landscape at the bottom of each page and this is all because i'm so i'm really interested in color and i feel like my knowledge of colour and colour mixing is lacking a bit because before taking the course last year prior to that I did do art every now and then but not enough to have that knowledge in my head that I'm not going to forget so what happened was though I took a day or two just after Christmas as a sort of reward if you like for all the hard work at Christmas and and had a lovely couple of hours doing all this and then since then now it's back to work time i haven't done any and so i thought if i make it a challenge if i join the 100 day project so it's hashtag 100 day project and it's mainly for artists this one there's lots of 100 day things going on i think that i think if i'm right this one is for artists to choose a topic that they really want to delve into or explore or whatever so i've decided to do it as part of that I am kind of cheating because I'm not doing one page every day. I'm doing a batch of pages, but I want to get to a hundred of them. So I'm doing them again, this time on A4 sheets. I did find the A5 a bit limiting. I sort of gave up also on the landscape. I just wanted to try and speed things up a bit. But actually it looks a bit of a mess. That one looks like a mess. A couple of the others really look like a mess. So I might go back to the landscape thing or just do more splodges <laughs> I don't know so this is also a work in progress but yeah so far I've done French ultramarine and Windsor lemon yellow for greens cerulean blue and cadmium free red cerulean blue and cadmium free yellow oh anyway I won't name them all but um also I'm going to be doing um Instagram stories of these as well so if you want to see the colors um I'll be doing highlights on my Instagram there as well and posting them daily but yeah making it a challenge so that I stick to it because I just want to learn about colour mixing more have have it more in my head so I know what I need to reach for when I want to achieve a particular colour and also this sort of thing is just very relaxing and fun so it is I, I have been using it like a bit of a warm-up before doing other art right so that really is it for this week let me know if you're doing any instagram challenges so i can have a look and see what you're up to i hope you have a great week and don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter the link will be in the description below and i'll see you again soon take care bye